God delivered me. My feet from stumbling, I will walk in the land of living. My soul from death, my feet from stumbling, I will walk in the land of living. My feet from stumbling, I will walk in the land of living. My soul from death, my feet from stumbling, I will walk in the land of living. I will bless you, Lord, for you are. I cry, I reached out my hand and you saved my life. I will bless you, Lord, for you were my plea. And the God of heaven turned his ear to me. I will bless you, Lord, for an ending love, for your grace and mercy raining down from above. I will bless you, Lord, to the very end. I will call. My feet from stumbling, I will walk in the land of living. My soul from death, my feet from stumbling, I will walk in the land of living. Love. 
Think of all this goodness. Think of all this grace that brought us through. From as high as the heavens above, to the greatest measure of our Father's love. Mercy is satisfied. He satisfies. He satisfies my desires. Think about this love. Think about this goodness. Think about this grace that brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. So great is the measure of our Father's love. So great is the measure of our Father's love. So great is the measure of our Father's love. Just hoping, I'm not just wishing. 
I know I pray to a God who listens. Oh Lord, I promise that we've been given. Yes, we are praying to a God who listens, who loves me, who loves me, who never overfell me, who tells me that I am his soul. And you surround me, remind me, you always are for me. So I come boldly to your throne. Good morning, CIC. It is always good to be back here and to speak in front of you guys. I am always grateful for this opportunity, and I cannot wait to have all of you at PAC all together to worship uh, in the community. We haven't done that since uh, 2020, but right now we are able to meet together at Nilpum Cafe. Uh, I know that you don't know where that is, so there will be an address up there right now and the map. Yes, if you haven't uh, seen or memorized those uh, address, please pull up your phone, type Nilpum Cafe on your neighbor map. And if that's still uh, difficult to find because it's in Korean, uh, I'll put a link down below in the description. So there'll be a link for neighbor map and also Google map. So you guys will be able to find the place pretty quickly. Uh, the service always starts at 9.30 a.m. at Nirpum. So until further notice, we'll be doing our worship services there temporarily. And if anything changes, we'll let you know. Like this past few weeks, uh, we couldn't meet because the corona cases were just too high. So if that happens again, we'll let you guys know through Facebook. So make sure you like our Facebook page so you can be updated as soon as possible. Past few weeks... Uh, Pastor Sonny preached a sermon series called Keep Calm and Carry On from Exodus. Pastor Sonny's sermon helped us to think about what we should do as a Christian to live and to face this nerve-wracking new world. Last week, we looked at the Red Sea incident and how Israelites put the trust in the Lord. Israelites were on the brink of death. The Red Sea was blocking them from crossing, and there was a huge Egyptian forces that was chasing them to kill them and capture them. It looked like there was no hope for the Israelites. However, God saved them from their enemies. And then Israelites sang in Exodus 15, 1 to 2. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. God listened and rescued Israelites from death. Israelites worship God. They realize God is the only one who can save them. This week, I want to focus on God who rescues us. From Exodus 15, 1-2, we can witness Israelites' testimony that they were praising God from saving them and being the only answer. However, how many times have we looked for answers somewhere else? I have done this so many times. When I didn't get an answer quickly, I turned to the other things. Instead of calling God's name, I called on other things, and I would turn to my own pride and power. I would try to do everything on my own first, and when everything failed, I would turn to God at the end. What does Bible talk about calling God's name? I would like us to look at our passage today. Let's read Psalm 116, 1 to 7. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. If you look at our passage today in Exodus uh, 15, 1 to 2, we can see that God responds to our cry for mercy. 
God rescued Israelites, and God is the only one who hears our cry. How many times have we tried to do everything on our own? How many times have we searched for other idols for answers? And when we don't get an answer immediately, we keep searching for other idols for answers. And this is pointless. And it only brings pain into our lives. Idols can give you and may give you short-term answers or short-term pleasures. But at the end, it will only bring destructions and pain to our lives. Our passage today tells us who the real Savior is. Let's divide our passage into three parts and dive deeper together to see the reason why we need to call God's name and to see the character of God. Instead of starting from you know, verse 1, I want us to look at verses 3 and 4 first and then go to the first two verses later. Let's read verses 3 and 4 together. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. From verse 3 and 4, we can notice two things from the author. First, the author is in deep pain. Pain is so immense that it equals death. There was no joy. There was no hope and, or any positive feelings. Pain, sorrow, destruction, and death were the only things present at the time for the author of the Psalm 116. Second, and the last thing we can notice is in verse 4. When the author was on the brink of death, one name he could think of was our Father, the Lord. The author cried out God's name. He cried, Lord, save me. What do you do when you're in trouble? Do you try to solve it by yourself or do you ask for help? Do you call your friends, families, or your significant other? Luckily for me, I never had to experience a near-death situation like the author of Psalm 16, but I can think of my very first time when I truly felt like there was no one to help me. It goes back to my first year in high school, back in 2005. I had just moved to Texas for my education. I can think of my very first time when I truly felt like there was no one to help me. Everything is different. But anyways, I was still excited for this new opportunity to study in Texas. And I could not wait to board the plane. My parents came to the airport with me to send me off. They wanted to spend more time with me before I went in. If I remember correctly, I think we had about four hours left till the boarding time. So if I had plenty of time to spend time with my family and then go to the terminal. However... I didn't want to wait. I went straight into the terminal. I wasn't going to see my family for a whole year, and that didn't stop me going into the terminal at all. My mom was heartbroken, and she still talks about that day. Anyways, I was excited, and things were going great for me during my first year in the States. I just wanted to tell you how excited I was about this opportunity studying in the States. After a good first semester, I started to live with the host family during my second semester. You know, I never lived with someone who wasn't a Korean before. So I expected some tensions, but it was a lot worse than that. Host family I stayed with was not kind to me at all. Long story short, for the first time in my life, I started to get depressed. And I really wanted to go back to Korea. When I couldn't take it anymore, I finally called my parents. Before when things started to go bad, when everything was good, I think during my first semester, I only called my parents about three times. And when everything was going bad, I went back to my parents and I would call them three times a week, four times a week. When I was going through my hardship, the person that I could think of was my parents. When the author of Psalm 116 was going through immense pain, he called the Lord. When I was going through hardship, I called my parents. When we feel like there's no one to turn to, we call people who are most trustworthy and who you think they will listen to us and comfort us. God is like that for us. That is why we need to call God, because God is there, there for us. God is there to listen. 
and God will listen our cry, and God will rescue us. That's why in verses 3 and 4, we can see that we need to call God, because when we're in danger, we are for sure know that he will be there to rescue us. Then we might wonder and ask, why do we have to call God? We don't have to call God. We can find other things to help us. Then let's read our verses 1 and 2 together. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy, because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. Before I directly answer our question, let me tell you a story. Have you ever liked someone in your life? Have you ever wanted to pursue someone? Maybe that girl that you saw in the cafeteria before, she looks so cute and you just wanted to ask her out. Or that boy right there who just, you know, really good looking and you want to ask him out. We all have those spaces, whether you're in high school, college, your adult life, you always want to pursue someone if you're alone. When I was in Wheaton, I finally found someone that I thought, man, she's the one. She, I started talking to her. I started getting to know her a little bit better. We were in the same classes. And as I was talking to her more, I started liking her more. And the great thing was that she wanted to be a missionary. And at the time of my life in Wheaton, I told myself, I won't date anybody who doesn't want to be a we, uh, missionary. So this was a perfect opportunity for me. So after getting to know her for a little bit, I finally asked her out. And guess what the answer was? So when you're a person who's asking someone out for a first date, I think the best answer is, of course, yes, I would love to go out on a coffee date with you. The, worst, the second worst response is, no, I don't want to go. I'm sorry. And the worst response is maybe. And she told me, uh, maybe I'll tell you later. So that was the exact response that I got from her. You know, I thought, you know, we would click together well. We were watching uh, TV shows together. We were doing homework together. We were spending a lot of time together. So I thought, oh, maybe things will go well. But the answer I got was maybe. The worst response for a guy asking. Those few days that I was waiting felt forever to me. She told me later on that she was going to date with me, but it actually took about a month to actually go on our first quote-unquote date. I knew that she didn't want to go. She said yes because she was just so nice. And during our first date at a coffee shop, I just knew that she doesn't want to be there. So any question that I was asking, you know, how's your family or... You know, any secrets in your life? I know I didn't really ask her that, but I try to get her talking more so that I'll get to know her better. But the answers that I got was just, yeah, it was good. Eh, maybe. Oh, no. So I felt like I was just talking to a stone or nobody. There was no response. Imagine even after this rejection that I still kept trying to talk to her keep texting her even though she didn't want any kind of relationship with me. Keep following her. I will probably end up being a stalker and maybe even in jail. It's a joke. I will never actually do that. But if you try to you know, talk to somebody who doesn't want to talk to you, and if you keep talking and talking and talking without response, there's no good coming out from that time at all with you or the person that you're talking to. When there's no response from the other person, it is difficult to form any kind of relationship. Now, let us answer the question we asked before. We asked, why do we have to call God? We don't have to call God. We can find other things to help. I think there is an answer in the very beginning of the verse 1. It said, he heard my voice. It is simple. God always answers our cry for mercy. God always responds. When we seek answers outside of God, it is like talking to a stone. There will be no response from it. This is why we need to call God and no other things. Also, Psalmist said in the verse 2, I will call on him as long as I live. This means that no other idols compares to our Father God. 
God is the only one that rescues us from the dead. And this is the reason why we need to call God and nothing else. That's why in verses 3 and 4, when it first started, that when we are in danger, we called God and God listens. And God responds and God rescues us. Verse 1 through 4 tells us the reason why we need to call God. We're, when we're in great pain, that equals death, God is there to hear our cry for mercy. He won't pick who to listen to, but will listen to anyone who cries out his name. Let's read our last few verses together. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. In verse 5 and 6, we can see the character of God. The author of Psalm 116 is clear that the Lord is gracious, righteous, and full of compassion. Not only God protects the unwary, but also people who are brought low. This strengthens why we need to call God. These two verses tell us that God will listen and protect anyone who calls for help. God doesn't pick people to save, but anyone who calls his name. God is not like a human being. We as a human want the best for ourselves. We are selfish beings. We do what is good for us. So if we see any dis disadvantages to helping others, we tend to not help them. Let me give you an ex uh, example. I don't support betting, but let's say you, you were to bet in a sports team. Um, you can still bet in the fourth quarter, and there's about a one minute left, and your basketball team is about to lose by 30 points. And if you can still uh, bet, who are you going to bet? You probably bet for the team that's winning by 30 points. But God will still bet for the team who is losing by 30 if they call for help. He doesn't pick who to help just because he has better odds of uh, getting something back from them. Even if your odds are the worst case ever, but if you still call for help, God will listen and God re will rescue you. As you see in the last few verses, in verses 7, it said that God protects the unwary. And even when you're brought low, God still listens to you. We live in a world with uncertainty. We feel very unsafe and uneasy at many times with the pandemic going on. We will probably never be able to go back to our normal lifestyle before COVID-19. During these troubled times, we could run into many hardships. A level of hardships can be very different, but for some, it could be a near-death experience. When we feel like there is no one to turn to, remember that, that we can always call on God, that God sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to save us from the dead. Jesus was crucified because God heard our cry for help. God rescued us. Call on God, who is gracious and righteous. And God is full of compassion, and He will listen to us. God will always listen to us, no matter who we are. Because God listens, because God rescues, because God protects the unwary, we are able to truly rest, even in the midst of what seems like unending hardships. Don't be shy, and don't wait. Today, call God. Rest your soul in God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to preach. As I was preparing for this sermon, I realized that I wasn't even calling on your name. But Lord, please give me strength to call you whenever I can. And give me a strength to love you and follow you until my end in this earth. Lord, I pray that people who are in hardships, who are here and who are in danger, especially in India, and Myanmar, I pray that you will protect them. And for them, it seems like there's no help coming. But Lord, I pray 
that as a Christian that we're able to make some differences for them and pray for our brothers and sisters. Lord, I pray for our, just our salvation. Thank you for giving Jesus Christ to this earth. I thank you for your gospel. In Jesus' name, amen.